Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. I have a vintage apron here with some really nice deep pockets and I have a great vintage piece of fabric. This one has a border print on it. So we're going to recreate this apron using this vintage piece of fabric. Chris and I run a secondhand store in our town and as a result, we get lots of great vintage gear and clothing and all sorts of things. So I'm going to recreate this vintage apron. Come along. So this is a close up of the apron. What it's got is bias binding around to the edges. It's got some gathering along the top edge here where the pocket is. And then you've got quite a large pocket here with bias binding around to the edges as well. So we are going to overcome my fear of bias binding by sewing the back and the front onto our fabric at the same time. I generally do it the long way and sew one side on, flip it around and then sew the other. But this time we're going to put our bias binding on all in one go without any fancy gadgets. We have a waistband at the top here that's been folded over twice and we've got a couple of lengths of tie to tie around your waist. And I have a bias binding here. Everything that we're using today, this fabric and the bias binding is all pre-loved. Uh, I got this in a deceased estate clean out that we did a while back. I believe this actually came from the same estate. So that's what we're going to be using today. So I think I make the main part of the apron just in this plain fabric with the border print as a feature pocket over the top of that. I think that should look nice. Let's hope so. And I'll also use the main fabric for the waistband. Now, because I'm going to make a copy of this apron, I need to get the dimensions. I'll fold the apron in half just because it's a little bit easier to manage. And from the center out, that's 13 inches or 33 centimeters. So I'll double that. That'll give me 26 inches for the width or 66 centimeters and the length of the skirt part of the apron is 16 and three quarters plus the seam allowance that's underneath so I'll add another quarter of an inch so that'll be 17 inches in length and 43 centimeters then we have the pocket now this pocket is running in the opposite direction but I don't really need to worry about that because I'm going to be using a border print that's 10 and a half inches or 27 centimeters for the pocket, uh, say 10 and a half inches deep. And that will include, and that includes the seam allowance at the top. Then we need to know how deep the pocket is. That is five and a half and how wide the top section of the pocket is. We'll make that three. So that's seven centimeters. I've drawn a little diagram just to help me out here. This is in centimeters. So I've got the square piece of fabric and then the height of the pocket and the width of the band on the pocket as well. The width of the waistband is 17 and a half inches, but we'll make that 18 inches to allow for seam allowance, which is 46 centimeters. And the height of the band is just under two inches. I'm going to make that two inches to allow for the seam allowance underneath on both sides. Uh, and we need to double that because this piece of fabric is folded. So we're going to cut our waistband at four inches or 10 centimeters. And the last thing we need are the ties. So that's 16 and a half. I'm going to add, make that 17. The ties are an inch and a quarter. I'll round that up to an inch and a half again for the seam allowance. So we'll make that three inches, which is say eight centimeters. Now I'm going to be replicating the waistband on this one here. If you prefer to have an apron that you have the waistband and the ties all in one continuous length, then check out the video I did for the peg apron. Oh, about a year or so ago. I'll pop a link in the description and up in the corner. That'll show you how to do one continuous length of waistband and apron ties. But we're going to be doing this in separate pieces today. 
And the last thing you need is some bias binding. I've got uh, part of a packet here that should be more than enough. And for the bias binding, I've measured around here, around the inside pocket, and all the way around the outside, as well as this pocket, added that all up, and that gives us the length we need for our bias binding, which is around about 120 inches in total, or 3.1 meters. I now have all the measurements I need. I'm going to go and cut up the fabric. With this border print, I'm going to be using that as my pocket. So I'm going to show you how to go about cutting a nice straight border print so that you have nice straight lines and it's not all wonky. I'm going to start off with a 10 and a half inch square for my pocket piece. This band is only nine inches in width. So I'm going to use the bottom section as the remainder of the pocket and I'll come up a little bit as well. I don't need to have this nice band hidden away in the seam allowance. Now because I need 10 and a half inches I'm going to come up a half an inch at the top of the border print and then measure 10 and a half inches down from that. That will allow for most of this section here to be hidden away in the waistband. Here is my starting point and then I need to come down to the end of the ruler so that's going to be an extra inch beyond the border at the bottom here. This won't be uh, too bland at the bottom of the pocket because remember we're going to have bias binding on there. That green bias will be a nice contrast at the plain edge of the fabric. In order to cut an inch from the edge of the border, you don't want to just get your fabric and cut straight across. You need to line up the lines so that they're nice and even. And it takes a little bit of extra care. But the one inch line on my ruler here is what I'm going to line up along the bottom edge of this border. So this border print has a blue edge on it. I'm going to line up that line on the edge of that blue. And you want to be consistent throughout your cutting and your measuring. So if your line is on the right hand side of the blue, stick with that. You don't want to go from one side to the other side. So I've lined the one inch line up on the very edge of the blue. And you can see along the bottom here, the fabric starts to turn down. Starting from the edge of your fabric, just pull the fabric gently and you'll manipulate this all the way across your cutting section. And we're only going to do small sections. We don't want to make one big cut. You run the risk of your ruler slipping and cutting incorrectly. So I've lined that up perfectly there and start cutting along an inch and away from the border and gently bring the fabric toward you. Now if you don't have a rotary cutter and a ruler you can do this with just a regular tape measure or a seam gauge and draw the lines and then scissor cut. So as long as your lines are nice and straight it doesn't have to be done with these tools. I've lined up my one inch line back from where I'm about to cut and I'll start lining up this fabric again And when I'm happy with that, I'll make another cut and bring that toward me again. And I can see that it's curling out the other way now. I've lined up my ruler back here again and I'll just manipulate that border so that it sits right where I want it to. And there we have a perfectly straight one inch gap at the bottom of our border. We'll turn the fabric around the other way because we still need to cut ten and a half inches and we'll do the same thing. Double check your measurement so I'm taking the ten and a half inches at the very outer edge of the fabric and I'm coming up half an inch from that border. So I've lined up my half inch line now on the fabric. I'll just manipulate the fabric again so that the blue line of the fabric is sitting at that half inch line and I'll cut part way up. And we'll continue that until the end. It's a very easy process lining up your fabric. It just takes a little bit of patience.
Okay, now we have our border print ready and it's going to be nice and straight on our apron, providing we're so straight, of course. So we've got our 10 and a half inches, but we need to have 10 and a half inch squares. I'll cut off the untidy edge here. Line up the straight edge of your fabric along the top and the bottom, and then we can cut straight up. And then gently move your fabric around the other way. We're now going to cut two pieces that are 10 and a half inches in width. I'll line up the 10 and a half inches on the side and along the top. I like to use the markings on my ruler as my guide. It's easier to see. That's one pocket piece and we'll do the other. Okay, now that I've finished cutting everything out, here's a list of what we need. For the pockets, we need two pieces that are 10 and a half inches square or 27 centimeters. For the main part of the apron, we want 26 inches by 17 inches. So 17 inches will be the height or 66 by 43 centimeters. These two pieces are the ties to attach to the waistband. They're three inches wide by 20 inches long. I actually made them a little bit longer because I'm a little bit more cuddly than some, so I needed some extra ties. So these are three inches by 20 inches or eight centimeters by 50. And I've actually folded them in half right side together so that I can sew them closed. And this one here is the waistband fabric, which is four inches by 18 inches uh, or 46 by 10 centimeters. If you wanted to have a bigger front on the fabric, then allow an extra inch or two, however much you need, but you'll need to add that to the main body of your fabric as well. Now that we've got the fabric cut and ready to go, with the waistband fabric, you'll see I have three lines drawn along here. So we need to have two hems and a center line where the waistband will sit on the fold. And I'm going to explain why we're doing this in a minute, but the first thing you're going to do is on one side, you'll measure half an inch all the way along, which is about 1.3 centimeters. And once you've done that half inch line, you'll bring the outside edge up to that line, fold it along there and press it. And what you'll have then is a quarter of an inch hem on that side, which is about six millimeters. On the other side, we're going to have a slightly different measurement and we're going to mark a line from the outside edge that is five eighths of an inch all the way across. Five eighths of an inch is about 1.6 centimeters. And then you'll fold that fabric up to that line that we've got drawn there. This line down the center here, we're just going to mark two inches in from the outside edge and we'll press that as well. So this side, we've got five eighths of an inch. This side, we've got half an inch. This line here, two inches. And then press the outside edges in together to the wrong side. Then you will fold this fabric in half. So I've folded up the raw edges to the wrong side. Now I need to fold this over to the other side, but we've got one fold here that is just over a quarter of an inch and this one here, which is a quarter of an inch. What the aim is when you're putting the waistband on is to sew from the narrower side. So this will become the front and this side will become the back. And when we sew this in place with the fabric in between, there's going to be about one eighth of an inch underhang on the other side of the fabric. What that does is when we stitch our waistband to the skirt, we'll be top stitching along here 
and we'll also be picking up the bottom layer of fabric at the same time. And by having that little one eighth inch or couple of millimeter underhang, it'll catch all the layers of fabric and you won't skip any sections on the back. It's quicker uh, and neat and you've only got one row of stitching. So you can press this so that the fabric that is going to be at the top is one eighth of an inch higher than the fabric that is at the back. I've got a contrast piece of fabric here. If we have a look at the side profile here, we've got a one quarter inch fold here, a three eighth of an inch fold here, and this fabric at the back here is a little bit longer than the one at the front. So when you sew this in place, you're going to be stitching along the edge here and on the back it will actually catch a little bit higher. So that way you'll catch all the layers of fabric and you'll also catch the fold in the hem allowance. Okay, with the two pocket pieces, this is the top. So I've got the narrower cream section at the top and the one inch band at the bottom. And you wanna make sure that you've got the orientation the same. So we've got a right and a left hand pocket. And what I've done here is I've marked a three inch line coming down from the center out. And from this center out, I've also marked a three inch line. So from the two centers out and from the bottom edge up, I've marked five and a half inches. So from the bottom edge up to there as well. So you want to have a mirror image of each other. And to make the bias binding easier to work with when we're attaching it, the inside corner here, we want to curve that. The size of the curve can be whatever you like. And now we can cut this out. And remember to have them a mirror image of each other. The curve that I've done on the inside here, I'm also going to place that on the outside. I think it'll be much easier to apply the binding with a curve than a straight edge. I did do it in a video for a placemats last week, so you'll know how to do that if you need to but a curved edge is going to be much quicker and I think it'll look nicer anyway. Okay, now it's time to put the dreaded bias binding on. <laughs> so the widest section is going to be on the back and the narrow section will be on the front. So place your bias binding wrong side up, take your fabric, place that over the top and you're going to line up the edge of your fabric with the raw edge of the fold that's on the underside. And then you bring the other one over and you'll pin or clip it in place. So you can see when this bias binding is folded over that that little fold on the underneath is peeking out just a fraction. And when you go and sew along the top edge here, that will, you'll secure the top and the bottom at the same time. So rather than pinning this now, I'm actually going to do this as I go at the machine. It'll be less fiddly. So we're ready to start. I've made sure that the widest part of the binding is at the back and I'm going to sew really close to the folded edge of that bias binding here. And as I go along, I'm just going to line up the edge of my fabric with the back fold of the bias tape. Before you go too far, you just want to check and make sure that the stitching on the back is caught as well as the stitching on the front. We're coming up to a curve, so you just want to go around the curve carefully, just a few stitches at a time. And there we have our bias attached to the outer edge of the pocket and that's secured on the other side. And I'll repeat that for the other pocket as well. Let's do the inner curve now. So on the inside part of the pocket we'll have the wider side at the back again and not much else is different. Just go slowly.
because you're working on the inner curve you've just got to move the fabric coming up out of the way and again you'll do small sections like we did before this is one of those jobs where you can't go like a bull at a gate you've actually really got to take your time make sure you line up the fabric properly on both sides okay the pocket pieces are both ready and we can set those aside for now with the main fabric here we can also go and put the bias binding on so along the short edges the two short edges and the bottom edge but before we do that we'll curve the edges take the same circle tool that you used earlier we'll trim that off same at this end and then we can apply the bias binding the same way that you've done your pocket section so we'll go down the short edge all the way along the long edge and then back up the short edge again we don't want to do the top section at all so I'll take that to the machine and so the bias binding on then I'll take the two three inch ties that we cut earlier they've been folded together with right sides facing and I'm going to start sewing on the folded edge come around and curve this end and then sew a quarter of an inch all the way down to the end you don't need to sew the bottom and here's one I've prepared already started sewing at the fold come around and then go straight down oh this is a bit sharp here I will go and fix that but you just come straight down to the other end and then it's a matter of getting your point turner we'll bring this to the other side we have to trim it back first though so let's take this to the machine I'll take the skirt section to the machine sew the binding on then on to the next step start at the fold and then curve as you're going around it doesn't hurt if you just want to have a sharp point either a triangular point and you can even sew it straight across if you want to when you get to the straight edge just do a quarter of an inch all the way to the end So to sew the bias onto the skirt part of your apron you want to make sure that you've got the right side facing up remember the back side of your bias binding is naturally going to be a little bit wider so as long as you have the right side faced up you'll be fine and all you've got to do now is take your time go slowly be careful you can hold your tongue the right way if you want to <laughs> that might just help but I think the best thing you can do to get the binding on is be patient not one of my strong points but I'll give it a go okay the bias binding has finally been put on around the two sides and bottom edge of the skirt part of the apron I don't know that I'm ever going to get good at it and I did make another little mistake I came off the end again but I've sorted that out so uh, as long as nobody looks too close it's going to be just fine set that aside and we'll take our ties and I'm just going to trim the curve and if you like you can actually trim closer to the stitching line as well you don't need to really do that a quarter of an inch isn't that much and this fabric isn't overly thick so you can reduce some of that bulk if you want to and it clearly looks like I want to so I'll continue on and I guess I better do the same on this side now if you have a point turner or a knitting needle in my case thanks to Rosie I have a product so I'll just pop that into the end and then I'll feed the stick through the fabric until I come out the other end and then pull that through do the same for the other one and just give this a press so that you've got the seam nice and flat there before we insert it into the waistband I'll repeat that for this one as well okay the ties are done they're pressed and are read, they are now ready to go into our waistband now we've already pressed this and we have a little bit of an underlap on the back side of the folded fabric with the wider hem on the underneath as well we need to add our ties to the apron 
and they're going to go on either side and the folded edge of the apron tie will be sitting at the top along with the folded edge of the waistband. Take one side and place that on the right side of the waistband and then we want to fold the waistband out and bring the fabric around and fold it right on that fold line that we have already got and I have that little bit of overhang on the edge there. I'm going to sew that in place and at the other end we'll do the same. Take the raw edge of your tie, place that against the raw edge of the band. I'm attaching both of them to the back side of the band. It makes no difference whatsoever. If you do one thing on one side, repeat it for the other and it's less confusing for yourself. So where that fold is, I'll bring that fabric around, close it up on the fold, not we're not lining up the bottom edges. All we have to do here is sew right across there and on this side here. I'll quickly go and do that now. So the raw edges have been sewn closed at the end of the waistband and the ties. We can trim the corners and then take the tie and the waistband, just separate them and the tie will come out and you can poke that little corner out on the waistband and repeat that for the other side as well. So now we have the waistband and our ties in place. We have the folded edge at the top and we have the opening along the bottom here. If I turn this the other way, you'll see that little overlap underneath and that will be the back side of the waistband. And it's right about now I've realized when I've done the binding for the pockets, I've forgotten to attach them to the apron before I put the outside bias binding on. I'm not going to go and unpick that. What I'm going to do is put some bias binding on the outside edge of the pocket. That will solve that problem. And along the top, it's not an issue at all because that'll be sewn into the seam. So I will go with my tail between my legs <laughs> and attach a couple of strips of binding to the outside edge of my pocket. But if you want to do this the right way, once you finish binding your pocket, line that up on the edge of your apron and then put your bias binding in place. Okay, I've gone and fixed my little mistake there. Ideally, if you're going to make this, you'll place the pocket onto the very edge of your fabric before you put your bias binding down. I've missed that step. So all I've done is put the bias binding onto the edge. Now I can make a design feature of that by bringing the pocket over to the center a little bit more and I can have a nice gap along the side here and then I can do the gathering inside there. And everybody except for you guys will think it was done intentionally. So I'm now going to place my pocket a little bit away from the outside edge. It's now a design feature. I'm going to sew this in place all the way around here and I'm just going to sew in the ditch right beside the green of the bias binding. So we want to do that on the outside edge of both pockets. So I'll just line that up so that the fabric is evenly spaced from the outside edge. So if you've made the same mistake I've made, then that is half an inch from the outside edge and it's lined up along the top edge. So we're going to sew down the side, all the way around to the top. Normally you wouldn't need to worry about sewing across the top, but because this is a pocket and you're going to be putting your hands in and out often, we're going to sew this onto the main fabric just to give it a little bit more stability. And we'll do the same on this side. I am going to start on the side part of the pocket first. That way I can make sure it's nice and straight before I go around the curve of the pocket. Okay, so I've sewn that pocket down and I've just left the opening where my hands can go and repeat for the other one. We've now got the pockets finished on the apron. We've got the ties attached to the waistband here and the opening of the waistband is along here. I'll take this back to the machine now and I'm going to sew 
two rows using a really long stitch length and have a tail at each end so I'll stitch this section and I'll stitch this section separately. I'll do that and come right back. I've left a long tail at each end. I've stopped sewing just on the pocket edge there and I haven't back stitched at either end because we want to be able to pull the thread so that it brings everything in and gathers it. The reason we've done two rows of stitching is it's easier to gather your fabric with two strands than it is with one, especially if you happen to break one of the threads. Hold on to the tail end of your thread and keep drawing it in until you've got an overall width from the centre of eight and a half inches. This is my centre, so from there we want to evenly gather the fabric on the inside of the pocket section until this measures eight and a half inches. I'll place a pin in the centre of my waistband and I'll line up the pin with the centre of the apron and if that fits in like that, oh, that worked out well, didn't it? So we want that to sit inside the waistband like that. Once you've done that, you can just tie the threads so that they don't move. Go to the other side and we'll do the same. I'm taking the top threads. So you can't pull top and bottom at the same time. You need to either pull the top or the bottom. So I've got the two strands from the top and I'll just gather those in until I can get that eight and a half inches as well. And I'll line that up again from the center out. Oh, I'm on a roll today. <laughs> These are working out perfectly. So now that I've got my measurements right, you can tie off your thread so that it doesn't move anymore. So now that I've got that tied, this is going to stay that size. And all you need to do is even it out so you have the same amount of gathering distributed across that opening. All right, now that that's ready, we need to put our waistband on. Now remember that on the waistband we've got the longer side and the shorter side. This is our front. We're going to be sewing from the front because we've got the fabric at the back overhanging a little bit. You won't have any problem catching the fabric on the back side. Start with the center of your apron and we'll place these raw edges inside the fold. You can line the raw edges up with the raw edge, then place the top layer over the top and pin that together. So your bias binding will go right up to the corner. Line everything up so that it sits nicely and from the center to the inside pocket section. You want that sitting nice and straight. We've got this side of the apron nicely pinned with the gathering just on that inside pocket section. If I pop a pin in on the very edge of the fold of the fabric along here, you can see the pin coming out on the other side and there's plenty of room for the th fabric to be caught with the stitching on the back side. Now this pin has been placed on the fold not on my stitching line. So there's going to be plenty of room there for me to secure that waistband. And I can now put the rest of it in there. Pin it all together and then we can take it to the machine and sew all the way down. Okay, this is ready to take to the machine and sew in place. Back stitch at the beginning and come all the way down to the end and then you're completely finished. Double check that you do actually have the end of your apron tucked in underneath your waistband. You don't want that accidentally slipping out. I'll reduce my stitch length back to three. When I was doing the gathering, I had that at 5.1. Remove your pins as you go. And I'm just sewing probably about an eighth of an inch from that folded edge. You can see a little bit of the green from the gathering poking out underneath. I'm just going to tuck that in under, under the fold there. That way I don't have to worry about pulling out those gathering stitches. I'm 
and just make sure when you get to the end that you actually have the ending tucked in underneath properly as well. There we have our waistband done. It's been completely caught on the other side there. So there you go, finished apron, nicely gathered around the edges of the pocket there. Pockets are nice and deep as well, so there's plenty of room to get your hands in there. I think that's come up all right. And it was nice that I was able to find some vintage fabric to replicate the vintage apron. So even though I've made a couple of mistakes and I'm not very good at putting bias binding on, I think this turned out quite all right. It's a great little fabric. I've been hanging onto this for such a long time. I wanted to make myself a dress with it, but it, that never happened. But I think this has turned out all right. Of course, this one here is much more vibrant in the colors. It's a replica of this one. I think it worked out just perfectly for me. What do you think? Are you an apron kind of girl? I am. I prefer to wear full aprons because I tend to make a mess at the top when I'm cooking rather than down at the bottom. I absolutely love aprons. And this one's a little cutie. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.